So Microsoft is warning that China is dominating AI. Apple officially picks Google's Gemini as the backbone for the next Siri era. Anthropic gives Claude an agent feature that can literally work inside your Mac files. Manus launches a feature that turns real-world conversations into tasks and deliverables. One X upgrades its Neo robot platform with a world model that predicts actions through video rollouts. And Google drops one of the biggest power moves in AI commerce, a universal standard so AI agents can purchase products across retailers and payment systems. All of these are pieces of the same future, so let's talk about it. Okay, let's start with Microsoft's warning, because it frames everything else. Microsoft basically says, yes, the West still leads in a lot of the premium AI stuff, enterprise software, cloud infrastructure, high-end services, but outside the West, China is gaining ground fast, and it's happening in a way that Western companies can't ignore anymore. And this isn't some random blogger's opinion, this is Microsoft talking, one of the biggest AI companies on Earth. They're tied into OpenAI, they run Azure at insane scale, they're embedded in the corporate world, and they have a front row seat to what countries, companies, and developers are using globally. What Microsoft is pointing out is a shift in the global AI battlefield. Western AI expansion has been built largely on proprietary models, premium pricing, enterprise contracts, and infrastructure-heavy deployment. That works great in rich markets. It works great for big companies. It works great where you've got stable infrastructure and budgets. China is playing a different game. The Chinese AI ecosystem is pushing models that are cheaper, more accessible, and in many cases, open source or close to it. That matters massively. Because in large parts of the world, the first question businesses ask is not, what's the most advanced model? It's, what can we afford, deploy, and maintain? And Microsoft is saying Chinese models are becoming dominant in exactly those regions, developing markets across Africa, Eastern Europe, and Latin America. A big example mentioned is DeepSeek. Microsoft highlights that DeepSeek's language model has captured heavy usage in those regions. In some markets, Chinese models are now a huge share of AI interactions, sometimes even exceeding Western offerings. Now, whether you love or hate that idea, this is what makes it so important. Adoption becomes ecosystem lock-in. If developers, universities, startups, and businesses grow up building around a certain stack, that stack becomes the default for years. This is why early internet infrastructure mattered. This is why mobile OS wars mattered. And this is why cloud provider adoption matters. Microsoft is basically warning that outside Western countries, Chinese AI may be becoming the default, largely because it's affordable and easy to access. And they go even deeper. They say China's progress isn't only a cool startup story, it's driven by a full machine, government support, massive investment in digital infrastructure, and a strategy focused on scaling innovations quickly and cheaply. China also benefits from a gigantic domestic market which gives companies room to experiment and grow. So the West isn't competing against one company. It's competing against a coordinated ecosystem that can ship at scale. The article also references what some analysts call the six little dragons of AI innovation. That's basically a shorthand for the cluster of Chinese firms developing models and tools that can rival Western alternatives, supported by state backing and huge momentum. From Microsoft's perspective, this becomes an investor story too. Because if Chinese AI stacks dominate emerging markets, Western tech companies face harder growth conditions internationally. Emerging markets aren't extra. They're growth engines. Cloud, SaaS, enterprise infrastructure, all of that expands globally. If Western models and platforms lose influence in those regions, you lose customers, you lose data flywheels, you lose developer ecosystems, and eventually you lose market share. That's why Microsoft ties this warning to AI stocks and global markets. Investors tracking Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, and other AI leaders need to watch global adoption patterns, not just Silicon Valley hype. And Microsoft also spells out the challenges the West faces, cost and accessibility, research funding and talent pipelines, and regulation that impacts cross-border deployment. Export controls and data restrictions might slow Western influence in some regions even more. So that's Microsoft's warning. The AI race is no longer just a lab contest. It's becoming geopolitical infrastructure competition. And that leads perfectly into Apple's move, because Apple's announcement is basically proof that even inside the West, AI is turning into an alliance game. Apple officially announced a multi-year partnership with Google to power Apple's AI features, including a major Siri upgrade. 
So yes, Apple chose Gemini. They basically said that after careful evaluation, Google's AI provides the most capable foundation for Apple Foundation models. And that's not light praise. That's Apple saying, we assess the field and Gemini is the base layer. This partnership means Gemini models and Google Cloud technology will underpin the next generation of Apple Foundation models and future Apple intelligence features. The upgraded Siri is expected later in 2026, and Apple intelligence continues running on device and through Apple's private cloud compute infrastructure while maintaining what they call industry-leading privacy standards. So Apple is trying to keep their identity intact. They still want privacy. They still want local processing. They still want tight control. But at the foundation level, they're leaning on Google's models and cloud stack. Financial terms weren't disclosed, but Bloomberg previously reported Apple discussed paying around $1 billion annually for Google AI access. That figure isn't confirmed, though it gives you an idea of the scale of this relationship. It's not a feature partnership, it's infrastructure. And it gets even more interesting because Apple already integrates OpenAI's ChatGPT into Siri and Apple Intelligence for complex queries. Apple told CNBC they aren't changing that agreement, so they're not replacing OpenAI. They're actually stacking providers. That's a really important distinction. Gemini will help power Apple's foundation models and next-gen Siri capability, while OpenAI remains integrated for certain types of queries. Apple is essentially building an AI routing system inside Siri and Apple intelligence. The context around this deal is also wild. Alphabet recently surpassed Apple in market cap for the first time since 2019, which is a major symbolic moment for who investors think is winning the future. At the same time, the long-standing search deal between Google and Apple is under scrutiny because a U.S. district judge, Amit Mehta, ruled Google holds an illegal monopoly in online search and related advertising. Back in September 2025, he didn't require Google to divest Chrome or Android. So Google still holds its ecosystem, but regulators are clearly watching them. So here's what's crazy. Even with that pressure, Google is extending its reach into the Apple ecosystem through AI. Apple says Siri fields 1.5 billion requests per day across more than 2 billion active devices. That distribution is insane. Gemini landing there is a distribution multiplier Google could never replicate through its own apps alone. And there's another layer. Apple evaluated Anthropic and chose Google. Bloomberg previously said that decision leaned heavily on financial terms, and now the official statement confirms Google's win. Now, while Apple and Google lock in an alliance, Anthropic is pushing AI agents into something much more intimate, your actual computer. Anthropic unveiled Cowork, built into the Claude Mac OS app. It's a research preview exclusive to Claude Mac subscribers right now. Cowork lets users grant Claude access to a specific folder on their Mac. Once allowed, Claude can read, edit, or create files directly. That sounds simple, but it's the difference between assistant and agent. A chat assistant gives advice. An agent touches your real assets and produces output. Cowork is designed for multi-step project delegation. Users can queue tasks like organizing files, extracting data from images, generating reports from scattered notes, stuff that normally takes time because it's spread across folders and formats. What also stands out is the workflow design. You can give feedback in real time, and Cowork can use skills and connectors that integrate external data or control browser-based workflows. So this isn't only local file management. It's an agent system that can pull data and execute steps. Anthropic emphasizes safety and controls because the risks are real. Users decide which folders Claude can access, and the assistant asks permission before major actions like deleting files. The article even mentions prompt injection risks, which is a real problem for agents that read external content. A malicious document or web page can embed instructions that try to hijack the agent. Right now, the feature is limited to Mac OS in the US, with plans to expand to Windows and sync features later. Now, Manus is aiming for something even more universal than your desktop real conversations. Manus launched Meeting Minutes, a feature designed to transform in-person talks into action points. And unlike a lot of transcription tools that focus on online meetings, this is specifically for physical meetings. It does not capture online conference audio. It's designed for in-person discussions, interviews, and real-world conversations. Meeting Minutes records discussions in real time and then delivers structured output, summaries, 
speaker identification, attendee lists, and actionable tasks. Two details matter a lot here. One is offline capability. It supports uninterrupted recording even during internet outages. That's huge because meetings don't pause for Wi-Fi problems. Another is AI speaker recognition for accurate assignment of tasks. That means it doesn't just transcribe, it tries to identify who said what, so action items can be assigned to the right person. Manus also tries to close the loop from talk to output. It can generate deliverables like presentations, websites, or social media assets directly from meeting notes inside the same workflow. And the business model is credit-based. Free recording is allowed, but analysis and structured output require Manus credits. If credits run out, analysis pauses until the user upgrades or replenishes. That's a clear monetization approach, and it tells you the value is the thinking part, not the recording. Now shift from meetings to robots. 1X Technologies integrated its new video pre-trained world model, 1XWM, into its Neo robot platform. Traditional robotics often relies on a huge number of robot demonstration hours. You record the robot doing tasks, train on those, repeat forever. That's slow and expensive. 1XWM uses internet scale video pre-training combined with egocentric human and robot data. Egocentric data means first person perspective, the view a human or robot has while moving and manipulating objects. The model predicts robot actions by generating text-conditioned video rollouts, then translating them into motion commands through an inverse dynamics model. So the AI is not only seeing, it's forecasting what actions lead to what future visual outcomes, then turning that into control. The backbone is a 14B parameter generative video model, fine-tuned for Neo's humanoid embodiment. Inference currently takes about 11 seconds per rollout. That latency is meaningful, and it shows where the tech currently stands. It's not instant reflex level autonomy yet, but the payoff is generalization. 1XWM reportedly generalizes better to novel objects and motions, especially for tasks not present in training data. Internal benchmarks and early feedback suggest it handles complex tasks like bimanual coordination and robust object manipulation, with success rates matching or exceeding previous models. Experts highlight that egocentric human data and detailed captioning during training lead to more physically plausible and reliable behavior. 1X collaborated with cloud infrastructure specialists at Verda to optimize inference speed, aiming to reduce latency and expand capabilities. Initial release is limited to select users for trials, with commercial rollout expected after validation. So this is robotics moving closer to world models, similar to what we're seeing in broader AI predict futures, plan actions, then execute. And now comes Google with what might become the hidden infrastructure of AI commerce. Google officially announced it's entering the AI commerce stage, where AI performs tasks on behalf of the user. And the key announcement is the Universal Commerce Protocol, UCP. This is a new open standard designed to provide a common language for interaction between AI agents, businesses, and payment systems. Google developed it in collaboration with major industry players like Shopify, Walmart, Target, and eBay. UCP is compatible with existing protocols such as Agent Payments Protocol, AP2, and Model Context Protocol, MCP. That compatibility matters because it means it can plug into existing ecosystems rather than forcing a clean replacement. One of the first practical applications is direct payment in Google's AI search mode and in the Gemini app. Users in the US will be able to purchase products from selected retailers while researching products using payment and delivery information from Google Wallet or PayPal. The retailer remains the official seller of record and retains the ability to customize integration, and Google plans to scale the feature globally and add support for loyalty programs in the coming months. Google is also launching Business Agent for direct interaction between brands and customers. It's a virtual shopping assistant that responds to inquiries in the brand's corporate style directly in search results. First phase access includes brands like Lowe's, Reebok, and Poshmark. And that's the bigger picture. Google is trying to standardize AI purchasing at the protocol layer, embed it into Gemini and AI search, and give businesses agent interfaces inside results. That's a foundational move, not just a feature. All right, that's all for today. Drop a comment with the move you think changes the game the most. Hit like, subscribe, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.